Welcome to a tutorial video on Twine 2.1. In this video I'm going to go over the passage macro and the history macro. Often it can be highly useful to know which passages a user has visited and where at any one moment they are. To help with this, Harlow supplies two macros, the passage macro and the history macro. What if you wanted to know the content of a passage without using the display macro? What if you wanted to know the name of the player's current passage in order to compare it to something else? The passage macro can help with those and other things. When used without a named passage, something already existing in the story, the passage macro returns information about the current passage the user is looking at, in this case, the one we're looking at right now. Accessed as a data map, attributes such as its name, tags, and source can also be retrieved through the possessive usage, and we'll look at that in a moment. For example, if you want to do a strange thing like combine the source of one passage to another passage and then run it, you could do that. And in fact, that's what's going on right here. So look, the value of the variable test var is 5, which will like, make a little more sense when we look at the code in a minute. So while the passage macro can give us information about any other passages or the current passage, the history macro helps us in retrieving data about the past, where the player has been, and in what order. So for example, we have visited the star passage and the passage macro. Notice of course it doesn't have data about the current passage. History does not contain that because it hasn't become history yet. However, if we go to passage macro and back to history macro, we notice those are now added to the results. So we were at start, we were at the passage macro, we're at the history macro, and then we're at the passage macro, and then we're back at the history macro, but of course that's not a part of the results yet. So let's look at the code. So the star passage points to two different passages, the passage macro and the history macro. The passage macro does pretty much what, we sh what I showed. However, the main example that I put together here, using the possessive usage, notice in each case, and a named passage, in this case test passage 1, and in this case test passage 2, we're setting its content, setting the source to the variable content. So setting content to test passages 1's source, then concatenating it, adding it to it plus the source of test passage 2. So let's look at each of those in turn here. Test passage 1 uses the set macro to set the value of the variable test var to 5, and then test passage 2 showed that result. And we combine the two in the passage passage macro. Right here, and then this is the result of the concatenation, the adding of the source of test passage 1 with the source of test passage 2. Although, again, as I mentioned, it's a pretty strange example and thing to do. Most of the time, the sort of co more common usage of the passage macro is to get information about the current passage, where the player is, getting its name or tags or maybe even source, or to look up some other named passage in the story. For example, here I used test passage 1 and test passage 2 and got their source. I could have gotten their names or their tags as well. And we could have looked at, looked, at, looked at that information, that is. Now the history macro, as I described when we looked at the story running, describes the past. And it returns an array result. So we can use the for macro, that's part of Harlow 2.0, with the each keyword and the expander to look at each in turn. So for each temporary variable named place in the expanded set of the results of a call to the history macro, do something, and in this case, print it out, I was at place, where place is, the result place is swapped each time it runs, and is italicized, as we saw, start, passage macro, history macro, passage macro. In each case, it runs through them all. However, keep in mind, and this is something to definitely keep in mind if you're debugging, history, when just debugged with a single passage, won't have anything in it, and will in fact cause errors. The reason for this is that there isn't any history. History doesn't work on the current passage, it only works on previous passages. So when debugging, keep that in mind. So in each case here, 
with the passage macro to look at information about other passages or the current passage, or the history macro to look at the previous places, previous places the player has been. In both cases, we can get information about the story itself while in the story, sort of meta information. We can either get the names or the source of another passage using the passage macro, or look at wherever the player has been using the history macro. In both cases, using construction of dozens or hundreds of passages, this can be extremely useful for knowing where the player is and where they've been and in what order they've been there those places. If you wanted to map out, for example, moving between a cellar to a room to another place, you could track those in turn and figure out where the player has been and use the physical spaces as named passages as a way to track a player through different locations and through the story itself. In the same way, using the passage macro, you could look up information about the name or the tags if you wanted to use user defined tags as part of the story to keep track of that information as well. And that's sort of two different approaches of doing that. But in each case here, the passage macro and the history macro tells us information about the story and passages within it, places within it as well, as well as the content of other passages and where the player has been as well. Thanks for watching.